Oh, all right. Hello and welcome to Nord News. Today is Friday, January 31st, and I'm your host, Kristen McDonald. The coronavirus is making headlines worldwide as several cases have been reported in the United States. Seagal Reefs, superintendent of the Nord Health Department, has important information regarding the virus and precautions you can take to stay safe. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that are common in many different species of animals. Rarely, animal coronaviruses can infect people and then spread between people, such as we saw with MERS in 2012 in the Middle East and SARS in 2003 in China. When person-to-person -person spread has occurred, it is via respiratory droplets, produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes, similar to how the flu and other respiratory illnesses are spread. While it is a very serious public health threat, based on current information, the immediate risk from this virus to the general American public is considered low at this time. In the United States, there have been five cases of coronavirus detected in travelers returning from Wuhan province in China. No person-to-person -person spread has been detected in the United States at this time, and the virus is not spreading in the community. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is screening travelers at 20 U.S. airports as part of its effort to identify people with the new coronavirus who are traveling to the United States from China. CDC officials will take the temperatures of anyone traveling from China and ask them to fill out a questionnaire about their travel history and any signs of illness. Situations like this can change day to day with new information coming out. There is currently no vaccine to prevent coronavirus infections. The best way to prevent infections is to avoid being exposed to the virus. However, as a reminder, we always recommend everyday preventive actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory viruses. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough and sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. These are everyday habits that can help prevent the spread of many viruses. Monday afternoon, the Sheriff of Norfolk County, Jerry McDermott, spoke to a full audience at the Senior Center during the January Triad meeting. His presentation included scam prevention tips and programs to keep seniors safe. McDermott believes it's extremely important to take the time to talk to seniors across his county. Uh, I think it's critically important to get out to our senior centers and let the seniors know about all the great programs that are available to them for free to help them live longer and independently in their own homes. Um, particularly because there are so many scam artists out there that are preying on our seniors with phone calls and emails and old-fashioned snail mail uh, trying to get it at their pocketbooks. Uh, but we also find that um, our seniors talk to their grandkids. Uh, right now with the opioid uh, crisis going on, we're increasingly seeing senior citizens, grandparents, raising their grandkids uh, because their own sons and daughters are drug addicted. So all of the great programs that we talk about in uh, helping people get clean and sober and rehabilitation it's critically important and we just want to get that information out to our seniors. Stay tuned after this break for more town news and this week's Living Local. Hi, my name is Maiev Bodenhofer and I'm speaking to you on behalf of the school committee. The school committee would like to respectfully request a few minutes of your time. As part of the Norwood Public Schools strategic plan, and in keeping with our efforts over the past few years to increase transparency, particularly with respect to the school budget, the school committee is conducting a survey of members of the community. We would like to hear from you about the best way to communicate with you. This survey will be the most helpful to schools if we hear from a large number of people across the entire community. You may complete the survey either online or on paper. The online survey is available on the main page of the school district website, www.norwood.k12.ma.us. Paper copies of the survey are available at Town Hall, the Library, and the Senior Center. This is a brief survey that should take just a few minutes of your time, so we hope that many of you will share your thoughts with us. Thank you. Welcome back. Last Saturday, the Backstage Boosters held their character breakfast, an annual tradition since 2007. It's a great morning for young children as they eat breakfast with characters from all the Disney movies, including princesses, snowmen, kings, queens, and Star Wars characters. It is as much fun for the NHS students dressed as those characters as it is for the attendees. 
The Backstage Boosters raise funds to support drama productions through the Nord Public Schools and for scholarships for the seniors in the drama program. There's a new dance facility on Washington Street and some of you just may remember the location. Let's take a look at this week's Living Local. If you are interested in taking dance classes or just looking for a space to rehearse for an upcoming performance or competition, the Between Space Studio is the place for you. Located at 486 Washington Street on the corner of Railroad Ave, it is owned and operated by Rick Smith, a lifelong supporter of the performing arts. This is a rental facility for the performing arts. It is a place where people can come and learn different crafts such as dance, music, belly dancing, yoga, meditation, uh, any type of wellness or fitness. This location in Norwood has a performing arts history and many dancers have graced its floors. You may remember that this studio was once the Academy of Dance Arts owned and operated by my sister Carrie Smith. The studio ran from 1981 to 2003 until she retired. During that time she spawned a lot of amazing teachers and choreographers who have gone with amazing careers around the world. In 2017, I moved back to Norwood, Massachusetts and renovated the studio back to its former glory. My hope was to inspire other children and other adults to come to the studio to practice the arts. Currently, I have two entrepreneurs working at the Between Space Studio. First is Masters Dance Academy, owned and operated by Becca Blair. And the second is Rakasha Belly Dancing, which is owned and operated by Soraya Doherty. Here at Masters Dance Academy, our goal is to instill a genuine love of dance. We have an incredible lineup of instructors and choreographers who are passionate, knowledgeable, and are experts in their specific dance styles. We offer recreational dance classes for 4th through 12th graders in ballet, jazz, contemporary, tap, and hip-hop. And we also offer tap and hip-hop classes for adult dancers as well. For those who are looking for a more intense dance experience, they can join our Masters Dance Academy competition team. We had an incredible first season last year, walking away with some special awards and even some overall placements. But here at Masters Dance Academy, our goal is learning and teamwork rather than walking away with the win. Some dance environments can get overly competitive and here at Masters Dance Academy we strive to make dance fun while supplying the technical tools one needs to become the best dancer that they can be. The Between Space Dance Studio is a wonderful space for me to provide beautiful opportunities for women, a safe environment for women to learn how to belly dance but also to keep their bodies healthy and fit. So with our program, it's unique because we're providing not only belly dance lessons, but we're also supporting it with um, an accredited bar fitness program to enhance your dance abilities. And it's a fierce bar workout, but it's a lot of fun. And women love the results that they get. So if you really wanna see change in your body, you need to challenge yourself. And I also provide private one-on-one belly dance lessons because there are some who would really like more hands-on work and secure um, confidence in themselves with just one-on-one -on -one, uh, training. So there are two studios here, so it's great. I can provide in the smaller studio some private one-on-one -on -one dance classes. So the Between Space has really been a magical place for me to share my brand and to provide for women a dance training program that's unique. Um, it's, it's just a very special place. In addition to signing up for these group classes, the studio is available for individual use as well. This studio is unique in nature because it can offer something no other dance studio can, a place to come and practice. Most children who are in other dance studios learn their choreography there, but when they go home, they have no place to dance. Here, they can come and use this space as their own private dance studio. So if you're looking for a private rental space to practice for a recital or a competition piece, the Between Space Studio is available for rental seven days a week. 
The Smith family has a long history in Norwood that spans multiple generations, and the Between Space Studio is located in one of the oldest neighborhoods in town. My roots go way back in Norwood. Even my mother attended Norwood High School back in the day. Um, my studio is behind 486 Washington Street on the corner of Washington and Railroad Ave. My grandparents owned this house and they actually had this studio built for my sister back in the 80s. I've been in the performing arts all my life. I'm a graduate of Norwood High School 1982. Um, I was a musician there, I was a drummer. I've also moved on uh, in my life as a musician and an audio tech. I worked over at Universal Studios in Orlando for 27 years. And when I moved back to Norwood, I felt that I wanted to have something here, uh, some type of legacy to give back to the community, whether it is uh, dance, theater, arts, uh, yoga, anything like that, where I can um, bring an environment of joy, happiness, and uh, a sense of community. Rick Smith has had a lifelong passion for the arts and is proud to offer a facility so others can enjoy their passion as well. Stay tuned after this break to find out what is happening in your local government. If you want to meet the people who make the town tick, watch Your Town at Work, hosted by Jerry Slater. On the latest episode, Jerry heads up to Norwood High School and interviews Kristen McDonald and Lisa Colosimo. Kristen is the Director of Guidance and walks us through the daily routine of her department. She is also in her first year as the head coach for the boys' basketball team, and you'll learn the difference of coaching boys and girls. Also on the show, you'll meet Lisa Colosimo, who is secretary to the principal. She is the first face you'll see when you enter the high school, and as a graduate of NHS, she is proud to be back. Tune in to the latest episode of Your Town at Work, hosted by Jerry Slater. Only on Norwood Community Media, your home for all things Norwood. Welcome back to Norwood News. The planning board met Monday night in room 12 of Town Hall. The meeting began with Debbie Holmwood resigning from her position on the board as she intends to run for selectman seat in the upcoming town elections. She will stay on as a representative until the conclusion of the election. The first hearing of the night concerned a site plan approval for a multifamily development at 12 to 14 Day Street. This is the first hearing that applies under the new Mixed Use Overlay District, or MUOD bylaw, that was passed during a special town meeting in May of 2019. After the applicant's presentation, both parties discussed a figure of $13,200 of public benefit as a result of this application. And so um, we're, gonna, we're gonna go to that. Uh, and you are going to let us know on where you are on that uh, town benefit? Uh, or have we settled that? We have not settled that as of tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Not yet? Mm -hmm. You good with it? 13-2? 13-2? I think I hear okay. him gulping very hard. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Thank you. Uh, is that agreeable? Uh, Let me ask you on, on the board. Is that agreeable? Yes. Yes. Any chance of negotiating? Well, this, we, uh, I'm not good in negotiations. So. Okay. Good. That's. Later in the meeting, the board approved a site plan review on 429 Neponset Street and modification plans to the space center area on 83 Moore Street. The planning board will meet again on February 10th. The sustainability committee was the other meeting of Monday night in room 24. Mark Ryan joined the committee to give a presentation on the DPW's solid waste and recycling program. Ryan urges the public that what's even better than recycling is reusing, as it's an even more cost-efficient practice. The committee went into more housekeeping items after the presentation, including subcommittee reorganization and outreach ideas, including a social media presence to get more information about their sustainability initiative back to the residents. The sustainability committee's next meeting will take place in the coming weeks. Following up from last week's meeting, the Board of Selectmen again discussed the potential name change of the office from Board of Selectmen to Select Board. 
my opinion, if we have a non-binding referendum, the people vote. And based on inf that information, it goes then to town meeting. When the town meeting members take the question, they now have something to work with. They have some idea of what the people want. And some people may say, well, only 12% or 14% of the population voted. Shame on the ones that didn't. I say it again this week. Uh, so if it goes to town meeting, they will have an opportunity to understand the vote of the non-binding referendum and, and govern themselves accordingly. The Board of Selectmen are asking the residents of Nord to voice their opinion on the name change via non-binding referendum on April's ballot. The final decision will rest with town meeting in May. Okay, we have a motion to change the name, uh, send it to a, let me strike that, to send a non-binding referendum forward, changing the name of the Norwood Board of Selectmen to the Norwood Select Board. That will mean that there will be a non-binding referendum on the ballot, and those results will go to town meeting, and they will govern themselves accordingly at that time and do the right thing, I suppose. So with that said, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Passed. The Board of Selectmen also met with Police Chief Brooks and Fire Chief Maurice to submit their monthly department reports and held a joint meeting with the Planning Board to elect Associate Planning Board member Brian Hatchie to interim member, filling a vacancy left by Debbie Holmwood's resignation. The next Board of Selectmen meeting will be February 4th. Also on Tuesday night, the Trails Advisory Committee met with a busy agenda. The committee began with an update on completed walks that were taken by the members. Following the trail walk discussions, the committee as a whole was updated by the various subcommittees. The topics discussed were the trail mapping, then the trail marking and construction. To end the meeting, the committee covered their next trail walks and items to discuss during future meetings. The next Trails Advisory Committee meeting will be February 11th. For complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch on demand at nordcommunitymedia.org. Stay tuned after this break to find out what is happening in your schools. Hello everybody, I'm Joe Meehan. And I'm Mark Hoover. And on this edition of NCM Sports Extra, we had John Longley in studio, as always, giving us an update on how the winter season has gone so far. I got a chance to sit down with four members of our uh, swim team, got to learn a little bit about you know, how the meets work and both the individual work that they do, the teamwork that they do, and, and how successful their season's been so far. Yeah, and then I caught up with wrestling, who was off to a great start to their season at 12 and seven, uh, and looking ahead already to the tournament with eight matches to go, a lot of individual and team success. And finally, I had a chance to use our Skype and check in with Sinead O'Brien, uh, senior up at Stonehill College, class of 2016 here from the high school, ran here at the high school, and academically and athletically up at Stonehill College has been just crushing it as part of the 4x100 team. So tune in on Nord Community Media for this edition of NCM Sports Extra, your home for all things Nord. Welcome back. Now we're going to toss it over to our Nord Schools reporter to recap everything that has happened this week in the Nord Public School District. Hi guys, I'm Stephen Allinger. Let's take a look now at some activities happening in our Nord Schools this week. The civics class at Norwood High School had a great time competing at the We the People, a Citizen and the Constitution competition in Boston last weekend. Let's go up to the third floor now and hear from social studies teacher Molly Eppenkamp. Last weekend, the students in the civics class participated in the We the People, the Citizen and the Constitution state competition. And they competed against five other schools from around the state in presentations about constitutional issues in mock congressional hearings. The students had been preparing for this since the beginning of term two, so since November, and they wrote speeches in response to specific questions. And then at the competition on Saturday, they responded to follow-up questions from uh, groups of judges who were lawyers and people who worked in the state legislature and college professors, professionals in the field of government and civics who had expertise to ask them these questions. The group of Adeline Janaid, uh, Dominic Finizzi, Clarice Sylvester, and Isabel Hagland uh, also took home a trophy as the highest scoring small group from our participating school group that day. Great job students and thanks again to all adults who helped out. Congratulations to Coakley Middle School student Abby Curran for her winning submission to the VFW Patriots Pen Essay Contest. Abby made it to the state level and finished in the top 10. 
She won the local VFW post level in Norwood and again at the district level and was one of 10 finalists at the VFW statewide dinner in Lemonster. The Prescott is having Celebrate Success Week and one of the themes was Teacher Swap Day. It looks like Principal Brian Riley found his twin. The Balch School had a day of origami assemblies by a presenter named Michael O'Foss from Origamido. Thank you to the PTO for sponsoring this event. It was a wonderful time for all and every grade created unique origami designs. Here, the first graders from Mrs. Wheeler's class are making penguins guided by Mr. LaFosse. Balch librarian Mrs. Duffy has been using Spheros, which are robot balls with features that can be controlled by iPads, with the fourth and fifth graders to develop their coding skills. Students use Spheros with iPads to control the robot's direction, speed, and time it traveled. The fifth grade students shown here are attempting to get their Spheros to jump a ramp, but stop before hitting a cute little animal. Students really enjoyed this challenge. And finally, the Balch held their annual family game night, and there was a big turnout. Congratulations to Nicholas for being the big cover-all game winner. Well, that's it for school news. There is something interesting happening in our classrooms and schools every day, and thanks to all the educators who share the news with us. Now, let's go to Brian Dunn for the latest sports news. Hello everybody and welcome into the sports update for this week. My name is Brian Dunn and our main story this week highlights an exceptional Norwood High School senior athlete who joined the ranks of a prestigious club here in Norwood High School Athletics. Let's take a look at the story of girls hockey captain Allie McDonough and her journey to 100 career points. Over to Reed. Makes a move. One time for McDonough and McDonough scores! What a beautiful pass. That is textbook Allie McDonough. There are many athletes that have the privilege of throwing on the Mustang hockey jersey, but senior captain Allie McDonough joins a group of select few to ever reach the 100 career point milestone. Um, so we played St. Peter's Marion, and that's out of Worcester, so we played at the Worcester Iceplex, super nice rink, and they got a call for, I believe, a trip on me, and we had a power play. We set up with me, Morgan Roach, Allie Martin, Aaron Wagner and Noel Conley, I believe, for our power play. And Aaron had it at the top of, or kind of where like the D stand and then uh, put it out front and Morgan Roach put it back door to me and I slammed it in. We all just hugged and celebrated together. It was obvious when it happened when that puck scored and fans and teammates could not hold back their excitement. It was kind of like a relief. Like I knew that it was going to be my 100th point and I was kind of pushing for it in the game before. And it was honestly so exciting. Like everyone was cheering and like uh, kicking their feet against the boards. It was loud, like it was just exciting overall. Allie is the first person to reach 100 points since Casey Smith from the class of 2015. She now joins a club of three other members, including Allie Maloof and Emily Kelly. Like I kind of didn't realize how close I was to 100 until uh, the coaches kind of added it up. And it was supposed to be a surprise, but I ended up figuring it out when the ref told me. Um, but it's kind of just exciting, like I've always loved hockey since I was a kid and it's just something that, I don't know, you don't see all the time, so it's exciting. The McDonough family was out in full force to support this amazing milestone. Um, well my mom uh, took two posters and was running like back and forth across the board, so that was pretty funny and then uh, my brothers ended up making a sign and it's just exciting to have them behind you and like supporting you because that's important. Congratulations, Allie, on this great achievement, and good luck the rest of the season. Shifting gears to the rest of the scores here, both hoops pick up wins this week. Boys hockey is right on the edge of the tournament with a win over Dover Carbourne. Girls hockey, gymnastics, and wrestling all pick up victories as well. Swim and dive with a late week victory over Medfield, and for those crooks from the numbers at home, because I know you all are, every Mustang team that competed this week won. And I have to say, not a bad time for the Mustangs to catch some fire down the stretch here. With that in mind, we're heading toward the tournament picture and I want to update you on where everybody is. We know girls basketball is in. They clinched last week against Medfield and they're now on the hunt not only for a back-to-back -back TVL championship, but a potential one seat in the D2 South tournament. Boys Hoop also has a path to make it there. They just have to execute with a couple games left. Boys Hockey is in. They clinched this week and the girls are knocking on the door with six games left to go. Wrestling is looking to send athletes to the tournament meets. Swimming dives preparing for the TBL championships and track and field are looking to build upon last season's success as well. So here's the bottom line. Norwood is going to have a very strong tournament presence this year and as always, NCM is your home for Mustang tournament coverage. We'll let you know as soon as we know where the teams fall and where they're headed. But right now, the goal is to finish the season strong and for those in the dance, they want a better seat at the table. So 
So we'll let you know when we know. And that'll do it for sports this week. Like I said, for tournament coverage and upcoming broadcasts, please stay tuned to our social media for updates on when we go live. Kristen, back to you. Thanks, Brian. Once again, the Boston Bruins and the town of Nord are collecting for the annual pajama drive. Last year, over 2,500 pairs of pajamas were donated. General Manager Tony Mizuko and Board of Selectmen Chairman Paul Bishop have the details on how you can help this year. Hi folks, I'm General Manager Tony Mizuko coming to you with a special announcement about this year's Pajama Drive. And I am Paul Bishop, Chairman of the Norwood Board of Selectmen, also here to speak about this year's Pajama Drive. This year we're collecting pajamas again for the Boston Bruins Pajama Drive and we're hoping to beat our total of 2,500 pairs last year and you can donate at any town building or any school building as well as a number of businesses and community organizations throughout town. Many of the families around now may not have the same opportunities as other young families have. Young families today make sure their children are dressed warmly, especially at night when the temperatures are turned down in our furnaces and so on. And that goes for their grandparents too. They get concerned about their grandchildren. Everybody wants to see our young children dressed in warm pajamas during these cold winter nights. So it's important that you take part. So please be generous in donating new, unused pajamas for ages zero all the way up to late teens and early adults. And you can drop them off at any of the school or town buildings in the town of Norwood. And again, as Tony said, last year we received uh, 2,500 approximately donations across this town. It surpassed any other time that we've done this. So this year we're trying to surpass that 2,500 mark and go even higher. So help us do that job and keep our young people warm during these cold winter nights. Thank you. Just a reminder that the presidential primary election will be Tuesday, March 3rd. The last day to register to vote in this election is Wednesday, February 12th. There will also be an annual town election on Monday, April 6th. The last day to register for that town election will be Tuesday, March 17th. If you are not a registered voter, you can register online, via mail, or in person at the town clerk's office. For more information on voter registration, visit the Norwood Town Clerk's website at www.norwoodmass.gov. Well, that's all for Norwood News. To stay up to date with Norwood Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.